Hey, Vinyl Community, what's going on? It is Tone, and I'm back for a quick as possible VCLT thank you video. Um, <clears throat> this is a video I've been needing to do for a long time, and so I feel real super guilty, um, especially in regards to two of the individuals, actually three of the individuals. Um, so there's four individuals involved, three VCLT packages. Well, the packages came from a couple, um, and everybody should know everyone who I'm about to talk about. Um, but I do feel really bad um, because I have been so lax in coming on to make a video. And it's not like I haven't made videos since I received the VCLT. I do my record store spotlight series. And then of course there's new vinyl finds and things like that. And I haven't, I did uh, tone show share videos, live concert show shares. And um, I really needed to do this. And so I'm gonna be making some public apologies. Um, let's just get right into it. I don't want to it to go very long because I have uh, a new uh, vinyl finds type of video going to be coming up shortly after, and then I'm going to be releasing uh, another record store spotlight series video. So, uh, first VCLT package came to me about a year ago, and uh, this is one of the ones I feel super guilty about. I talked to this individual um, pr pretty frequently. And um, we're here in the same city, here in Los Angeles, California. Hey, oh, by the way, the truth, truth. Anyway, um, the first one came from Junior over at Comic Rama Records. And everybody should know Junior. Uh, if you don't, I'll leave a link to his channel below. Fantastic record collector. He's also an authority on comic book collecting and uh, he doesn't show a lot of those videos on this channel. It's Comic Rama Records now. Um, but he, he is a fantastic collector, very knowledgeable, uh, very passionate, and he's just, just a downright amazing human being um, and a good friend. So he sent me this a little over a year ago. Uh, I think I had mentioned on one of his videos how much I loved uh, Hillsong. And uh, this shows up at my doorstep not too long after that video. And it's uh, the 2009 release of Hillsong's album, Awake. Um, and it is un un unbelievable. That's the one thing that Junior and I have in common. We, um, uh, we love, um, well, we have a lot of things in common, but one thing is contemporary gospel and contemporary Christian artists who maybe not that well known, who are kind of on the cutting edge, um, but when it comes to Hillsong, you know, they're probably one of the biggest bands in the world. And uh, they're fantastic. In the Hillsong camp, there's actually two different bands. Um, when you see most of the media put out by Hillsong, it's usually Hillsong uh, worship. The other um, version of the Hillsong recording group family is Hillsong United. And Hillsong United and Hillsong Worship have two slightly different missions in, in their touring and their recording. Um, Hillsong United is basically on a, a slightly lower level in terms of, um, they're a little, bit, a little bit more rootsy, where Hillsong Worship is um, a little bit more arena-ish. You'll find them in huge arenas. I mean, massive arenas. I've seen them a couple times here in LA, um, both times at the Forum here in Los Angeles. Massive shows sold out. And uh, huge sound, huge, uh, really deep songwriting slash huge pop productions with fantastic musicians. Um, and I know this is Hillsong Worship, even though it's just branded as Hillsong because of who is singing the lead on these songs uh, in terms of the female lead. So 2019 uh, Hillsong, the album is Awake. I listen to this thing all the time. Junior, I'm so sorry it took me so long. Thank you so much for um, your kindness and your friendship, brother. I, I really appreciate you. So enjoying this record a lot still. Uh, the next group of gifts, and it's a it's a stack, uh, came from two people who I'm very close to. 
They've been in this vinyl community for a long time, a long time. They're very well respected, very well loved. I, they kind of stopped making vi videos for a while now. I'm hoping uh, they started doing them on Facebook. I'm hoping they'll come back on here and do them. But that is none other than Memphis Vinyl Jim and the Misses, Jim and April. Um, I owe you guys a massive apology. This group of records, with the exception of one, uh, I've had for about a year and a half. Shame on me. And I, I never got a chance to come on and make a video thanking them. Um, other things got in the way. Life got in the way. My career, I had to deal with my career pretty heavily for a while. They understood what was going on. Um, but this spans a birthday gift all the way through Christmas. My birthday's in July. So they kind of held on to the stuff closer to Christmas because they sent me a bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, also recently they were hosting auctions on Facebook. And their auctions were very successful. When it comes to auctions, Jim and April really, really know what they're doing. And so I made a lot of auction purchases. I won a lot of uh, things via auction through them. And one of the things that I didn't grab that no one else you know picked up on was uh, an RSD release this is the first one I'll show uh, that I had wanted uh, this is uh, Soulful Proclamation which is the album title it is by Messengers Incorporated uh, if you're a fan of funk if you're a fan of early early Commodores early Cool in the Gang Parliament Funkadelic the JB's early Tower Power you'll love this record fantastic private press done in 1972. The original pressing goes for buku dollars. And um, I wanted this when it came out. I believe it was 2017. And I knew it was an RSD release and I v vowed not to buy it because if any of you guys, most of you guys who follow, have followed me for years now know, uh, even via a video I made a few years back, you can find that in my video log, um, where I rant about RSD. Um, I am not a fan nor a supporter of Record Store Day, and especially uh, Black Friday Record Store Day. I never was a fan of Black Record Store of Black Friday Record Store Day ever, um, and I shortly thereafter became very distant from Record Store Day, the corporation. Um, if I am at a store on Record Store Day, I'm purchasing pre-owned media, and or. Uh, if I do purchase new media, it's stuff that is not RSD related because there is a much bigger profit margin on that new stuff than RSD and the mainstream music industry allows independent record dealers. Um, it really is a cash cow for those guys, and it is so unfair. Uh, anyway, you can watch my video if you want. You can go find it. Wanted this. Wasn't going to buy it. Figured I'd get it later from somebody else who would bought it, used it and kept it in good condition or just didn't want it and wasn't going to buy it just to hike up the price. Uh, but I wasn't going to buy it directly. Um, I wasn't going to contribute to a new purchase of a record store day item. I would buy it used. And this was in the auction. No one snapped it. And when I got my package, this was VCLT from Jim and April. Fantastic funk record. Um, next one they sent me was one of the ones that they sent me a while ago. Uh, everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people know this record. It is his debut record, and it is fantastic. Uh, I used to have a copy, and I sold it a long time ago. This is an original issue first pressing of Tony Joe White's Black and White. And you know it's an original issue first pressing, 1969, when you have this red printed uh, hype tag. It's not a sticker. It's actually printed on the record jacket. And uh, it basically announces the fact that the album has uh, Willie and Laura Mae Jones and also, of course, uh, Polk Salad Annie, which was those two were released as singles a year before, uh, before he had a full length out ever. And they were huge. And so when they released the full length, his first debut, his debut full length the next year in 1969 on Monument. Uh, they put that little hype sticker, and that's how you know. And everything after, immediately after that is m minus this thing. Um, considered represses, not reissues. And then later on, you'll find reissues. Um, this is a fantastic record. Was really happy to get that. Um, one thing that Jim and I 
share in common is this fixation and this fascination and this love for, I don't even know what you would call the genre. Um, Southern fried soul, Southern fried country, a la Eagles slash maybe blue eyed Southern soul, like Firefall, Ambrosia, um, God, who else? Things like the average white band, maybe a little bit. Um, those genres, that genre of, of, of music. Um, and I didn't have this. And so Jim sent this to me, Jim and April, and this is Funky Kings. Um, this was uh, one of the first bands that Clive Davis put together for his new label, Arista. It's called Arista, not Arista. I'm going to end up doing a video one day on pronunciations of record labels and terminologies and because it's crazy how everybody pronounces things. Anyway, when, when Clive Davis left Columbia Records and launched his label, Arista Records, uh, this is one of the first bands he put together. Uh, it's a good record. Uh, I'm not a fan of the lead singer, but the music and the songs are un unbelievably good. And I really like this record. Never had it. Heard of it, but never had it. So they sent me this. I was very happy with that. One other thing that Jim and I share together, Jim and April and I share together, is our fascination, almost like Junior and I, our fascination with uh, early and highly collectible Christian and gospel recordings. Early Christian and gospel recordings, 19, late 50s through the 60s through the 70s, through the early 80s, go for a lot of money. They can go for a ton of money. And um, they're highly collectible. Uh, it's one thing that he and I share. And so uh, this band, the Christian Airs, they sent me, uh, was a band that actually came out in the 80s. There was a Christian Airs that was out before these guys. It was an all-white group. And um, they were great. But this this uh, black version of the Christian Airs came out in the early 80s, and this is a 1989 or 88 pressing. I believe it's 80, I'm gonna say it's 89 on Muscle Shoals Sounds recordings. Unbelievably good. <laughs> so, so good. The engineering and the mastering and the performance is unreal on this record. I've only had, I only have one other Christian Airs record of this particular Christian Airs band, and it was great. It's an earlier 80s pressing, but I was really happy to get this. Fantastic. Um, in light or in the same vein, uh, he sent me this J.D. Sumner and the Stamps record. I'm a huge fan of J.D. Sumner. Um, this is a repress, a mid-70s, uh, I'm sorry, reissue of their original album with a different title. Same album cover, 1968. Um, same album, minus one song. Uh, this one seems to sell more than the original issue. I don't know why I looked it up on Pop Psych. But um, this is great. I love it. I didn't have this. Love J.D. Sumner. Thank you for that. Um, this band I was aware of, had heard their songs, and I own, I owned the CD but did not own the vinyl. And I was looking to get the vinyl record at one point, and I just never did. That's the Memphis Dolls. Um, they only have, I know they're still together, I believe, and they only have one release, and that's this. Um, just a fantastic record. It's called Rooted, to, uh, Rooted in the Bone. And uh, the vinyl release only has eight of the 12 original tracks. So they released the album on compact disc. It contained all 12 full tracks. And when they did the vinyl, rather than have to do a double vinyl spaced out, they just did a single vinyl issue and picked eight of the, of the 12 songs that were the best. And it sounds really good. If you're not familiar with the Memphis Dolls, talk about fantastic, um, my gosh, folk country there's even a bit of bluegrass in there. Uh, and then there's even a little bit of slightly psychedelic verge of psychedelic. It's real weird. The, there's a song on here called Please Don't Leave Me Now, which is an unreal song. It's just unbelievable. If you threw George Harrison's vocals on there circa 1967-ish, 68-ish, right around that time, and you threw that song, that song, this song on here, onto Sgt. Pepper's, it would fit right in. That's just really good. Um, 
Highly recommended if you guys don't have this. Memphis Dolls, Rooted in the Bone. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the last two records. Man, this one, uh, my dad had it, and I never picked it up my whole whole 20-something years I've been collecting, like being a serious collector. Of course, I collected as a kid with him, but, um, you know, on my own, being a serious collector for at least a quarter of a century uh, since I was a teenager. Um, yeah, probably like 12 or 13 never had this unbelievable the path just fantastic fantastic ralph mcdonald um ralph mcdonald is a jazz slash funk percussionist a lot of you guys are probably aware of him especially the jazz guys out there um I used to love listening to this record as a kid uh ralph mcdonald has played percussion live and as a recording musician for Steely Dan, Earth and the Fire, um, I believe Return to Forever, a lot of people. And uh, I think this is his debut or his sophomore. I believe it's the debut. It's called The Path and I won't get too descriptive, but the title track, The Path, unreal. So it's a, it's a conceptual conceptual song, a conception song. And what it is, it is a journey through black music um, from its roots in Africa through to modern music in the recording era back into Africa. So it starts out with tribal rhythms going and that lasts and goes into Caribbean rhythms. You see where I'm going. Leading into early jazz, leading into funk leading into soul and fusion, and then right back into Caribbean rhythms and sounds, and then right back into West African tribal and folk sounds, as if to say, here's where we came from, but we're not going to forget where we came from, and right back to the beginning. Unreal song. It's about 18 minutes long. It's a sidelong track. If you don't have this record, Ralph McDonald, The Path, pick it up fantastic i was so happy that they sent this to me really happy this last one was the birthday gift one other thing that jim and i share together is our fixation and our fascination with a certain record label and a certain genre of music called boogaloo uh which is kind of a nickname for latin soul um and that label is fania records fania records was launched in the bronx new york city and it was a label that really gave a kickstart to Latin soul. Not Latin jazz, but Latin soul. Soul music, bona fide soul music that with a Latin flair to it. Um, always or most always with vocals and lyrics. Full structured songs. Sung in English, I'd say 90% of the time in English. Not Spanish. Soul music, but with a Latin feel to it. Um, great sound and uh, Jim and I love this label and uh, I knew he picked this up for me it's, and I just had been waiting for it it's been sitting here played over and over and over and I haven't thanked them for it this whole group of stuff that they sent but this album is amazing Ralph Robles taking over slash con conquistando and conquistando is Spanish for taking over or conquering um, excellent, excellent mid sixties, Latin jazz slash Latin soul boogaloo record. Unreal. Fantastic. Original first pressing on Fania. This is not an easy find and it's in amazing shape. Amazing, amazing condition. So Jim and April, once again, please accept my apology. Um, I feel really horrible that I, I was almost to the point where I dreaded doing this video because I just feel bad. I love you guys very much. Thank you for being such a good friend, both of you, and for loving and caring for me so much and um, for your gifts. It's not the first big package they sent me. So I uh, love you guys. And again, thank you. Please accept my apology for being so late. Uh, the last thing I want to show really quickly before I get out of here is a book um, from my buddy, Andre Linda Leg. Uh, you guys know Andre. Fantastic record collector. Um, expert in 70s nostalgia, 
One other thing we, he and I have in common, aside from uh, collecting, is um, nostalgia. Collecting certain uh, trading cards and Mad Magazines. I'm a huge Mad Magazine fan, aficionado, aficionado. And so is he, which was kind of neat to find out years ago when I first found, uh, found out that he, he liked Mad. Anyway, uh, he's a huge fan of my record store spotlight video series that I do. And he's always one of the first ones to comment. And um, I really appreciate that. And when he saw this book, he didn't know it was a book I had been looking at picking up for a while. But just never got the chance to. And he said that in his little note to me that he saw it and he knew I just had to have it. That book is by Bernd Yonkmans. And it's plainly called Record Stores. It's a huge, thick uh, coffee table book. I'm a, a huge fan of coffee table books that are music based, especially things that have to do with um, media and collecting. And because you guys know I'm a massive advocate for supporting the independent record store, um, this was great. One thing, <clears throat> and I'm just going to mention it briefly because it, it ties in with this, that um, only Andre knows, and I believe one other person in the vinyl community knows, is that I've been between two and a half and three years now working on a coffee table book um, that is very similar to this, but it's in volumes. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why I wanted this book to begin with because I didn't want to copy the author. I didn't want to do the, it the exact same way he did it, and I wanted it to be extremely unique that would totally differentiate this book from the volumes that I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm not going to get into m my book because it's not about this, but I will say that uh, I've been working hard at it. Uh, it, is a, it is in regards to exposing and supporting and sharing the beauty of record, independent record stores literally all over the world. And I'll explain one day when the book is released how I did that. But I do have a distributor already. They're just looking for the first manuscript, and I'm about halfway there. It takes a lot. Um, so I wanted this book because I wanted to reference the book mostly to make sure I wasn't copying it. And I was relieved in reading this book. I'm about halfway through it. Uh, that there are two pretty much totally different things. So I'm happy about that. Great book. Fantastic gift. Andre, thank you so much. If you guys have a chance, if you don't already own this book, grab it. It's fantastic. And I'm sure you can go to Barnes & Noble and get it. You might even be in the discount section. If you see it, pull it. Um, it. It's a great, great, great addition to your music book collection. So thanks a lot for that. Um, that's it, guys. I'm going to be launching another Music Finds video very shortly. And um, also, right after that, a brand new Record Store Spotlight video. So... Thanks to Junior at Comic Rama Records. I'll leave your link to link to his channel below. Uh, Jim and April haven't been making videos on YouTube a lot lately, but uh, I'll leave a link to them anyway, and also to Andre's channel when delayed. Thanks, guys. Always God bless. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.